Greetings, everyone. Before we begin, like usually, first, a warning. Or, <clears throat> basically, a fail-safe so I don't get effed in the A by copyright. <laughs> I do not own any animes, such as Naruto, Demon Slayer, My Hero Academia, Dragon Ball, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Hunter x Hunter, <clears throat> and many others. I do not own any art and or music in this, in any of my videos. The art and music you may see, along with the videos themselves, belong to their original creators. The only thing I have any right or own over is my own voice and story. Thank you, and without any further ado, roll the intro! Greetings, everyone. It's your demon, or your boy, <coughs> Nicholas Kibutsuji, or if you're in Japan, Kibutsuji Nicholas, here. And today, I have a story for you. Now, I'm not going to tell you what this story entails, not just yet. All I'm telling you is it's going to be probably my favorite of all the stories I've created thus far. So, a little backstory. This story revolves around... Hold on. Now, without any further ado, let us begin. Mm -hmm. We begin with before Tanjiro's birth. As we see, he, two people, and as we see a gathering of over seven to eight people, <clears throat> now, one of these people is in control, obviously. He's angry with the others. Even pissed that he does not yet have what he wants. This man is known as Kibutsuji Muza, or if you're in America, Muzan Kibutsuji. He has the terrible weakness of the sun. Meaning he's basically a vampire, but cooler and stronger. Now, of course, I'm not saying Muzan can beat Dio or anything like that. No. <laughs> That's a... That goes to the, um... TikTok and YouTube short debaters. <sighs> I don't really like getting mix, mixed up in that kind of stuff. So yeah. Anyways, back to the story. Muzan's one weakness 
was the sun. <clears throat> he could not enter the enter day, or he would burn to a crisp. He created a race of creatures called demons, so they'd be able to go to oh to multiple places at once, and he could find find the cure for his and for his weakness quicker. The cure for his weakness was known as the blue spider lily. However, it was hidden far away. Its location was unknown even to the strongest and wisest of humans. Only a certain few knew of this and knew of the location of this delicate and precious flower. But recently, Around 400 to 300 years ago, Muzan had an encounter with uh, someone, a human, who was able to who defeat him in combat, but was not able to kill Muzan. He beat him, but Muzan, taking a coward's way out, exploded his body into over a thousand pieces, scattering them apart from each other. The human was able to slash almost all of them, but just enough survived to form a head. And if you don't know, if a demon's head is still, and if a demon can form its head, or if a demon still has its head, it's able to survive. That is why decapitation and sunlight are the and wisteria poisoning are the only three known ways to kill a demon <clears throat> or oni or akuma or majin akuma meaning demon majin meaning devil now now, <clears throat> Muzan looked to one of his strongest warriors. Some might even say they were the, his strongest warrior. Muzan was infuriated. Hated with m I'm with her a great deal. Not as much as the others. But he was still infuriated infuriated with her. He then got an idea. Due to her brother, others unique and powerful skills, he believed that only the time that a male member of her bloodline would be blessed with either incredible strength, speed, and skill like her brother Yorichi. He also believed that if it was possible for her to have a human child, then, and for her to have a human child, then, and a child with a human, then the child would gain the ability to walk in the sun, and possibly even sun breathing. But if the child did not gain sun breathing, Muzan would plan to devour said child if it was able to walk in the sunlight. He, ta he tasked his strongest demon with this precious mission. And so she did such. She found, it, found one of her brother's, other's best friend's descendants, he was, of course, horse sitting alone in a tavern and or bar. She was disguised as a human. The two had a couple drinks and um, one thing led to another. Bam. She was pregnant. For those who have not ca caught on, 
This video is what if Tanjiro was Kokoshibo's son, or female Kokoshibo's son. Yes, <laughs> I'm a maniac, and I know I'm going to hell for this, <laughs> but I do not care. I'll gladly rot if that means I can continue making good content and good stories. Now, <clears throat> back to the story at hand. <clears throat> Kokushibo would eventually, after nine months, gave birth to a child. She, now, when she looked at this child, she gained an overwhelming feeling and need of overprotection to protect the child, no matter what. <clears throat> she brought the child into sunlight, and, it's funny enough, the child started burning, but after around 10 seconds, and around 5 seconds in the sunlight, the child stopped. His wounds then immediately began to heal. As it looked, as the child looked at its mother and started giggling. Now Koko Shibo just stared at the baby's eyes after it was done giggling. The baby stared directly into hers. All six of them at once. Somehow. <laughs> this, now this was the moment when everything would change. She did not want to give up the child, nor raise it as a, to be a warrior. She did not want Luzon to devour her child either. She wanted it to live. So, what she did was what any other child, parent back then would do. She gave, <clears throat> she waited for a dark, wintry, and stormy night. Went to what appeared to be a nice home, knocked on the door, and left the child in a basket and dipped because she wanted the child to be alive. Now, of course, she made a mental note where she left the child. Her memory, her memory, being a demon, it was entirely photographic. Like, literally, she basically just CGI copied that whole place into her memories and the way to get there. When she got back, and when she got back to, to Muzan's castle, an infinite palace, Muzan asked her what had happened. She then said it did not work. Her child was devoured by I mean, by her body, and she was deemed not and she deemed it impossible for a demon to have a child. Muzan was furious. But he calmed down. As he then said, a failed, another failed experiment. Gah. Very well then, go back to what you were doing. As moved on, on simply waved his hand away. However, what he didn't realize was a couple years later, around six years, I'm sorry, around ten years later, during a span of ten years, Koko Shibo was, and um, Koko Shibo was pulling strings, even Muzan's. Despite him being extremely intelligent and powerful, she was able to get underneath his skin and manipulate him like a puppet from the shadows. While she did this, 
she also grew stronger, devoured, devoured a hundred times more humans than normal. And instead of only relying on her breathing style, she even began developing and, and using her blood demon art more and more and more. Within a span of ten years, she had eaten over ten million humans. Now that's a lot of blood. 50% of these were mare cheese, or rare bloods. A rare blood, if I'm correct, one rare blood has the, and has basically the same strength as 50 normal bloods. Meaning if we're doing the math, and I really don't want to, she consumed a lot of blood and a lot of power. Like, someone in the comments, please do that math for me. So, yeah. Muzan, however, had no idea what she was planning. All he could feel was his cells growing stronger. And all he could feel was his cells expanding and growing stronger. <clears throat> of course, he thought this was just us multiple random demons growing stronger across the lands. But, never to be expected, it was a single demon. One night, right at the end of those ten years, Koko Shibo had enough. She wanted to see her child. She wanted to take care of her child. She wanted the child to be hers. And to be be with her, and only her. So, that night, she, he, oh, she openly confronted Muzan. Muzan was shocked and appalled that, that Koko Shibo would, and would go against him. But truth being told, after the second year of feasting on nothing but blood and humans. She, she broke free of Muzan's curse through sheer power and blood alone. In other words, she was able to defy him. She was able to speak his name without death. She rushed up. Muzan tried to self-destruct her, of course, but he found that his curse had n had been broken on, and her curse on her, his curse on her had been broken long ago. In shock, Muzan tried to attack her. What he didn't expect, however, was was for him to be immediately blitzed at over Yorichi's speeds. <clears throat> he saw he then immediately got sliced and or diced in a matter of moments no in a matter of friggin nano no picoseconds he stared stared at the demon who had just overpowered him so easily and said ha how how she then said, simple, after the <clears throat> ten years ago, I lied to you and manipulated you from behind the sh and from behind your own back. I, ov I overpowered you through not just training on my blood demon art, breathing styles, and physical, and pure physique and strength. No. I devoured nothing but humans across not just Japan, but the world. But I was able well, to find a way across, across, the, across the water. 
I went to other places and devoured even more humans. I've devoured over a million humans at this point. Half of which were all rare bloods. Muzan then looked at Kokoshiro in absolute fear. As he put two and two together, her, her controlling him from the shadows and lying to him, plus a lot of training and power gaining, equaled problem. Muzan tr instantly regenerated, however, and tried attacking her. But before and but the second and but the very picosecond his regeneration had he had his body had regenerated. It was sliced and diced once more. She Koko Shibo then said, Don't regenerate. It will only make this more painful for you. As she would then say, Now I have beaten you, meaning I am in control. Got that? Muzan clenched his teeth and stared at Kokoshiro in anger. And he said, like I'd ever surrender to you. As out of every, out of her arms, back, legs, and hands, palms, fingers, and basically every single part of her body, including even her own hair, what appeared to be a billion long, extending, and cur curving, moving blades with, uh, with a million eyes all over them, and with over a million eyes collectively on all of them, came darting at Muzan at, the s at incredible lightning speeds, or even the speed of light even. <clears throat> As... She then said, got it? As, and as she then said, I repeat myself, do you yield? Muzan started to clench his teeth once more and even begin, and even begin rubbing them together, together again. This not only gave him severe PTSD of what happened around 400 years ago, but it also made him pissed off at his, own, at his own self that he couldn't see this coming, that he couldn't predict one of his own demons would overthrow him so easily. He was furious. However, he knew the danger he was in. He knew the power which he stood before, and so he said, I yield. Kokoshibo then gave him an evil smirk and said, Very good. Now, as she would then and use her leg and just kick him, sending him flying what appeared to be miles in this infinite fortress, as she'd then say, Now, as now, as the new leader of all demons, Nakime, as she would then, as she would then yell, Nakime would appear out of, and would then walk out of the shadows, as she would then say, yes, new master, as she would then say, Summon the upper moon. Summon the rest of the upper moons. They must know of this change in the order. As they then said, yeah, and as she then said, yes, master. As then, and Nakime played her biwa and or shamazen <clears throat> with a single thong of the strings. The upper moons were teleported once more. They all looked around in confusion as Doma then said, What? Hmm? 
Did we forget something? We just left, didn't we? And didn't we? He, he began scratching his head. And we, we just left about ten years ago. We shouldn't be seeing each other for like at least another hundred. <laughs> As Akasa would then say, Shush it, you perverted woman eater. As he'd then say, fine, fine. As Nakime would then say, quiet. The upper moon, the ranking have, ch the rankings have changed. The upper moon soon got very nervous, thinking that one of them would be replaced. Haste and or killed. As then, they'd say, and as then, <clears throat> Akaza would then say, what happened to Master? And what happened to Master? Normally he'd be in front of us, us telling him us what had happened. And then Nahime would then say, that is the problem. And that is the reason why you've been summoned. Muzan has been defeated. Not by humans, but by, by one of the upper moons. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was in absolute banana shock. <clears throat> Even Doma was shocked. Akaza was shocked. Hanpengu was shocked. Gyoku was shocked. And Daki and Gyutoro were shocked. They then said, What? Who defeated Muzan? As then they realized someone was missing. And from the five upper and from the six upper moons. As then and a throne on a face appeared to tap. And as the ground appeared to turn into a door, the door then opened and out of it came a throne and rose a throne. This throne appeared to be in the shape and appeared to be very moon shaped. By that I mean it had moons all over it and the backrest part of the chair appeared to be shaped like a moon, <clears throat> like a crescent moon. As Kokush Ibo would be seen sitting on top of the throne, everyone would then say, what? As Akaza would then say, well, how? How did, did you even get that strong? You shouldn't be that strong. No one is. As <clears throat> Koko Shibo would then say, simple. I hid some things from Muzan and overpowered him quickly. I devoured more humans than anyone could possibly imagine. And I gained power unmatched. The end of... <clears throat> I trained and mastered all of my skills. Broke free of Muzan's control. And now... I overthrew him. Now... He is Upper Moon One. As we see Muzan on with, instead of his red eyes with black slits in them, they were now red eyes with the numbers Upper Moon 1 in them. As Koko Shibo would then say, I have overpowered him, therefore I am stronger. As everyone would look at Koko Shibo's eyes, as her six eyes would now appear to be red 
red and yellow with black slits. <clears throat> As she would then say, I am, sorry, not red and yellow. Her eyes would now be purely red with black slits. And she would then say, now, there is some, there is going to be a change of rules. First off, no demons are allowed within this certain quadrant. And she would then, and as she would then use a blade, which instantly sprang out of her palm to write on the ground. She would then instantly spawn about a hundred more blades out of her hand. And she then used the blades to carve out of the ground and wood hood what appeared to be a village and or forest. And she would then say, no demons whatsoever are allowed in this quadrant. If I even sense a single ounce of demon, and if I even see a single demon in that area, they will feel my full wrath. She said with, ang with anger and malice in her voice, and she would then say, now, <clears throat> the mis your missions have also changed. <clears throat> now, instead of killing a Hashira when you see one, without a single question, and without even a single question, your first, uh, I'm your first, first, option, no matter what, even if you hate the Hashira, is to turn them into a demon, no matter what. If you see a demon slayer or even a human with any amount of, and with any amount of greater or impressive power, you turn them into a demon. Understand? As the six upper moons, including now Muzan, would gulp and would begin shivering, as she'd then say, good. Now, finally, <clears throat> I am glad to announce my final victory. You see, many years ago, my brother also had a bit of a sigh. I had a brother. My brother was the strongest of all demon slayers to ever live. Not only have I now gained power over his own, but now, how I will show, I will tell you all a secret, one which I could not remember till recently. My brother had a side hobby. Instead of just being a demon slayer, he was also a bit of a farmer. He found and began to care and take care of a small patch of blue flowers. These are called blue spider lilies. For those who, are, who want to know where said flowers are, I will not tell. As I have already, and as I have already found and, and used such flowers with the cooperation of another demon, known as Lady Tameo, I was able to create a, a, I was able to create something that would allow a demon or whoever ingested said formula uh, and or medicine, it would allow them to fully walk in the sun and the moon for as long as they wished. In other words, I gained true immortality. Unfortunately, however, there was only two flowers 
and there was only a small batch of flowers. There was once a large grove, but someone, but someone, possibly a demon from way back when, decided to destroy the flowers. I do not know who did it, but there is only a small patch of flowers left. I took the remaining flat lilies, gave them to Tameo, and only came out with three, and with, and only came out with three, yes, three, the <clears throat> serums, or cures. I ingested one, Tameo ingested the other, and her assistant, Yushiro, ingested the other. Now, not only am I stronger than the strongest being to ever live, I have gained immunity to the damn sun. I can regrow my head if it is ever cut off, if possible. I can regenerate and move at speeds unimaginable. <laughs> And now, due to me, the overpowering Muzan, I have made him, I have made his blood my own. Meaning, now all of you, Muzan's blood has turned into my blood. In other words, I have access to every single one of you. Or in other words, <laughs> I have all of your strengths, and I know every single little detail about every single one of you. Your fighting styles, your weaknesses, your defenses, your fears and, st your fears and strengths. I know them all, including yours, Muzan. You're afraid of the sun and my brother. And now you're afraid of me. <laughs> oh, how cute. I should then say, now. I send now, leave. As they would be sent out. I should then say, now. Time to do my favorite, ah, now, to do my favorite, favorite thing. I should then say, Nakime. Nakime would then, then play her Biwa slash Shamism. And then, with a, <clears throat> they, she would wait, and she would be right in what appeared to be a, a large amount of woods. She would then see the, a 10 year old playing around, and she would then see what appeared to be a 10 year old with black hair and red eyes, and red and white eyes, playing around with, with some other humans, even some girls. It was obvious that these girls were more than friends, or at least had intentions of being more than friends, with the black hair, and with the red-eyed and black-haired human, or child. Koko Shibo simply waited till Tanjiro was out of, and was out of the line and without of a seeable radius. Once Tanjiro could no longer see what was happening, or in other words, once he went home, Kokoshibo struck, striked. And it was Kokoshibo's time to strike. She attacked the little girls and destroyed them, even their own homes, as she had now gained a new ability a new powerful one. She could cause her blood 
to leak off of her body, as well as control where it could go. But that was not it. From her blood, she was able to spawn, and from each single tiny drop of blood, she was able to spawn a large amount of blades. From each drop of blood. In other words, she can spawn katana blade, and she can basically spawn the blades from her demon art out of a single drop of blood. <clears throat> so in other words, she can use us this as a friggin' booby trap, which she already did about a one year ago before she overthrew Muzan. She placed, she did something very clever. <clears throat> she chopped, she went to a, a, another forest, chopped down all the trees, then used a very long and tedious process to turn the trees into paper. She then did the long, tedious process of cutting the paper into small squares, then putting each one drop in each of the paper squares, then folding the paper squares into, <clears throat> into a bag-like formation, and into an extremely small bag-like formation that was airtight, and that was almost airtight. She then did another extremely tedious process of digging out almost a mile around where Tanjiro lived and where the child lived. She then put all of the white and all of the bag-like formations of paper, each with one drop of blood in them, in the ground, and then buried them all up again. Meaning, in other words, if... In if any undesirables are in the radio, are in the area, she can literally cause an endless amount of blades to literally spawn out of the ground and slice them up. Then, the blades will simply retract back under the ground, and it will look like nothing ever happened. Although she is a dead human and or demon. <clears throat> it was a perfect security system. Also, because also, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, and around this time, she devoured another demon, a demon known as Rui. He was a spider demon with a very impressive blood art, a demon blood art. She gained the blood art, but instead of using it for say, the purposes he used it for, she used it as almost and as basically invisible trip wires. Meaning, even if she's not there to activate it and activate the trap, if someone, and there's like a million of these trip wires all over the place, if someone, human or demon that isn't Kokushibo, enters this area, it will immediately trigger her the trap which she had set, causing the blades to basically spawn out of the ground, stabbing said human and or demon to dust. In other words, yeah, she uh, basically booby-trapped a mile radius of a forest. Why the hell would she do this? I don't know. <laughs> Well, obviously, to protect her own son. Now, that night, she not only murdered those girls, but also the adopted family, which Tanjiro had been living with. She named him, um, but didn't really get a chance to see him. As we go to Tanjiro's point of view, it was late. It was early, and it was late morning. He woke up to a strange smell. A smell of... Fire? Smoke? He sprang up and smelled sausage and bacon. Weird. He smelled cooking meat. 
it wasn't really, it wasn't really very common for cooked meat to be cooking in the morning. Especially since the ton, the family Tanjiro lived in and lived with was very poor. Or his family was very poor. He woke up and immediately sprinted down, down the stairs and immediately sprinted towards the kitchen. There he saw a woman with long black and red hair cooking. The woman wore black and purple kimono and or heiori. It was weird. She was cooking in his house. Had he accidentally landed in someone else's house last night after a long night of working? And after a long day of working, the woman then turned around. Tanjiro then saw something terrifying. The woman had marks on her face. No, her entire, what appeared to be stretching across her entire body. They appeared to be marks that were shaped like fire. Weird. But then again, these were the same exact, these were almost the same exact marks Tanjiro had across his body. His family called, I mean his so-called family, thought of these marks as either a mark of a, of a god or the curse of a demon. But they treated Tanjiro as if he was a god, a deity. In other words, Tanjiro's family had started a cult around him. However, it was small. Sodoma's cult didn't exactly know about them. But they but Doma had recently begun hearing about a child born with strange red markings on his on his body. The child was, was and it was rumored that the child was a god reborn in a human body. It was strange, creepy. But hey, Doma had also had a weird childhood where, he, where his parents had also based an entire religion around him. So he didn't really think of it much often. And so he didn't really think of it as anything weird. Now we go back to Tanjiro. Tanjiro looked before him at what appeared to be a, t a tall, tall woman with red and with six red eyes, each with a slit in them. Then when he blinked, the woman's had normal eyes. They looked almost exactly like Tanjiro's. The markings were still there. As Tanjiro rubbed his eyes and didn't see the six eyes, he thought maybe he was a bit sleep deprived. As he then heard a woman, a voice from behind him say, Hello. Tanjiro was terrified and jumped. And then said, Gah! As she then said, What a beautiful young human, what a beautiful young child you are. As Tanjiro then said, Who are you? What are you doing in my home? As she then said, Don't you mean our home? Hmm. After all, this is not your home. As she he would then point out several things which were different than Tanjiro's home. As he'd then say, wait, where am I? As she then said, you're in my home, youngling. Or should I say, son. <laughs> but don't worry. After all, if you get, after all, you probably have those awful memories of what happened last night. As Tanjiro would then get a flashback 
of what appeared to be a monster break in their home and begin slashing his family to bits. As she, as the woman then simply put her palm on Tanjiro's forehead, the thoughts then immediately appeared to burn away. As she then said, none of that. Now, don't you know who I am? As she would then put her palm back on Tanjiro's forehead. As Tanjiro would seemingly get new memories. Weird memories. No, these were memories of his time with his mother. This woman was his mother. Of course he knew that. The woman then said, All right, now. Are you ready for training? As Tanjiro then said, Yes, mother. As she then said, Good. Let's go outside. You're going to train. But before the two, um, but as the two entered outside, they then heard someone say, Through the fire and the flames over heaven. Interdimensional punch. As then, whoop, and as then, the ground appeared to shake beneath the two. As it then immediately broke apart, replacing it was a black and red portal. Two were immediately, immediately fell through the portal. As we go to another world, uh, it is a, it was a good day in Konaha. Aside from a certain demon, aside from a, from a certain child, being chased by angry villagers, and aside from a little boy being chased by an angry idiot villagers. Then, what appeared to be, and then, out of nowhere, the sky appeared to crack open into a red and black void of some sort. Then out from it appeared two humanoids. Both had black and red hair and red eyes. They looked weird, like samurai, but samurai were outdated and old, and kind of dead. <clears throat> Koko Shibo looked around, in confusion. She didn't know what happened, but she suspected either a demon, demon had found a way to get rid of her, or some or something else was interrupting in her time with her precious little boy. What she did not know, however, was that her realm accidentally was affected by a certain and by a certain stand through the fire and the flames over heaven. Its normal ability is called ultimate, the ultimate stand, where it has every single stand ever created's abilities combined into a single stand. Its over heaven ability, however, is called all in one. Basically, in other words, every time a skill, power, and or ability is imagined or thought of, the user and stand instantly gain it basically maxed out. In other words, it was truly an ult the ultimate power. But while testing it out, said idiot, being me, <clears throat> accidentally affected the demons. This is universe, and this universe of demon slayer. So, oops. They basically, in other words, 
basically they got d4 seed. Now, back to the story. The two walked around the village till they re till they reached what appeared to be a person of power. This man wore a strange green jacket of armor with a red swirl on on its back and on the back of said armor and or jacket. The man had long and had spiky white hair that only went up. Somehow it defied the very laws of gravity without being a demon or having a demon art. Freaky. The man wore a and had a headband which only went over and which went over one of his eyes instead of being on its forehead correctly. <clears throat> the man also had a black face covering that covered not only his mouth but also his nose. The woman I mean, the man then said, hmm? Well, how, how, what can I do for you, Hoot, on this fine day? As Kokoshibo and Tanjiro would then walk up to him, Kokoshibo would then say, excuse me, but where are we? As he, the man would then say, oh, oh you're in Kona, Agakure, the hidden leaf village, in the land of fire. As... <clears throat> well, Kokoshibo was confused. Someone had brought her to another world? As she had traveled across basically the entire world and had never heard of a place called the Land of Fire. Or Konohagakure. As Kakashi, the man who then said, My name's Kakashi Hatake, immediately began and trying to sense what the heck their chakra was. Luckily, there was, and luckily, <clears throat> the leader of the Hyugas, as Hayashi Hyuga, was right next to him. As he then said, Psst, Hayashi, these are, do these two look weird to you? Hayashi then used his Byakugan on the two. What he saw, however, terrified the crap out of him. He saw a black, and what he saw what appeared to be a black, large flame around the female. And within it was what appeared to be a six-eyed black and red dragon head. This could be guessed, and this could be guessed to be her aura and or chakra. He then said, but, and he then looked at Tanjiro, and instead of seeing the same thing, what he saw was different, weird. He saw what appeared to be spinning, I mean, over a million, spinning pure white, crescent shape, and crescent moon shaped, shape spinning blades. Each, however, was pure, was pale white with what appeared to be a pure white aura around each of them. <clears throat> as he then said, and as he, Hayashi then whispered to Kakashi and said, These two are definitely not normal. The female gives off an aura of, and gives off an aura of absolute malice and terror. The, the male, however, Gives off a strange aura. Kakashi then said, Hmm. Weird. Well, I don't do. Well, hmm. As he then say, So, what can I do? So, um, anything else I can help you with? As Kokoshibo then said, Please take us to your leader. And to the leader of this village. As he then said, All right. <coughs> The two were then brought up towards Hoka, the Hokage's mansion. 
Haruzen then s- and Sarutobi or Haruzen then said, Hmm? Kakashi, come in, come in. What's the problem? As he then said, Well, we got two strangers who, according to reports, fell out of the sky. Not only that, however, and I even saw this with my own two eyes, the strength, according to Hayashi, the strangers each wield a aura, um, and wield a strange aura. The female, who I'm only guessing is a, it's the mother, has a, has a terrifying aura of malice, hatred, and darkness. In other words, it's like Orochimaru's, but much worse. The other one, however, according to Hayashi, it is like a weird, it is like a balance between death and life, between kindness and hatred, between defense and offense. In other words, it's simply, it is like, hmm, how do I explain it? I get yeah. It is like a cup that is half full and half empty. In other words, it's as if the child has not yet chose a fate to be evil or good. As Sarutobi would then say, hmm, very well then, I would like to spar with the child. He would then say outwardly in front of the three of them, Koko Shiba would then smile and would say, of course. <laughs> After all, I think, I think my son here should be able to, able to show you some things you don't, don't know. And she smiled. <clears throat> Sarutobi then said, hmm, let's see what you got then, child. As the two immediately he then dashed and were seemingly teleported due to the body flicker and to, due to an extremely powerful body flicker. The two were teleported out towards a training ground. Out towards one of the training grounds. As Haruzen then said, all right, Chai, all right, young one, bring it. As he then said, don't worry, because as I've never fought you before and I don't know what you hold, or what type of power you hold, I'll go easy. He then smiled and giggled a bit, like an old man, like, <laughs> Kokoshibo, however, clenched her teeth, teeth, but only a little bit. As she then said, Tanjiro, sweetie, hmm. show him what we're capable of, and show him what you're capable of. Now, in all honesty, Koko Shibo had no idea what Tanjiro was capable of. However, she did know that from his memories, Tanjiro was great with using, with wielding a sword. He did not have your reaching level skill quite yet. But he was still very good with a blade, nonetheless. <clears throat> she even, and she even, during the memory change, she gave him, him some of the, and she even implanted some memories on how to do the normal breath and on how to do the moon breath styles. However, what happened was not expected at all. Tanjiro looked at Haruzen and brought out his blade, but instead of using moon breathing, or at least regular moon breathing, Tanjiro began breathing and began regulating his breathing. He then said, first form, and he then said, Breath of the Pale Moon, first form, 
as he then said. <clears throat> White moon, evening palace. Koko Fushubo was confused. What do you mean by this? What Tanjiro then did was absolutely amazing. He basically did the normal <clears throat> first form of moon breathing, however, it was a little tweaked. Instead of doing a single slash, it was four much larger slashes from each direction. And not each direction, it was four much larger slashes. Not only that, however, but the slashes themselves were pure white, and were pale white. And in them, instead of being yellow or even blue, crescent moon blades, it was pure white, and it was glowing white crescent moon blades with what appeared to be a white glowing flame swirling around them like a strange aura. The attack was extremely fast and flew at Haruzen with almost no time to prepare. Haruzen and immediately brought out his staff and in an attempt to block the attack. However, it was too fast and so he did did the best thing he thought he could at the time. He dodged. Immediately jumping out at to try and avoid, avoid whatever this attack was. <clears throat> he saw that the attack then and moving and then began increasing speed and dashed and the fort or slashes immediately be began direct acting themselves directly towards a large amount of trees. They then each, each then begin slicing through about 10 to 11 trees before the attack faded away. But as the attack seemingly faded away, a large amount of almost 40 pure white cre flame pale, pale fire flaming crescent moon blades begins and exploded out of nowhere and began slicing and dicing anything they touched into pieces. In other words, basically, these crescent moon blades are pure white, and they have this pale fire-like aura around each of them. <clears throat> Haruzen looked back at the attack in amazement and fear, and he then thought, if that attack hit me, I would have died. <clears throat> As Koko Shibo then said, then thought, hmm, he appears to wield moon breathing, but different. This pale moon breathing, it appears to be a white form. This pale moon breathing, or white moon breathing, appears to be, be a white variation. However, it appears to multiply the attack instead of it just being once. It is, <clears throat> it is four times, meaning if he uses any of the larger forms, like say catastrophe, it would quite literally be a, cal a calamity. Instead of it being just a catastrophe, it would be a calamity. <laughs> and she didn't chuckle in her mind. As she would then say, all right, Tanjiro, time to leave now. As Haruzen was shocked and appalled, Donzo was about to jump out of nowhere when all of a sudden Kakashi sensed Donzo's presence. As he then said, Donzo. And as he then reached Donzo before he could and said, Donzo, don't do it. The child may be strong, and you might have nefarious purposes for him, which I won't allow. But his mother is the real problem here. Her aura is far, 
is like that of and is like that of Orochimaru's. But instead of it being in a, an exact copy of hers, her aura is far stronger than Orochimaru's. As if she's truly a monster or beast of darkness and evil. As we go back to the Tanjiro, who, who with his mother began playing out I and mean, basically teleported outside of the village due to his mother basically holding him and by the hand and dipping out there at the speed of light. <clears throat> now, the two began and were walking outside the village and were even playing, playing with wooden sticks that Tanjiro's mother was able to literally carve out of a giant tree. She carved them into katana shapes. But of course, they're not able to actually cut or do damage. <clears throat> as we go to, t and as we see someone from above, someone hiding in the trees and someone hiding far higher, both staring upon Tanjiro and Kokushibo. The one in the trees thinks Tanjiro is a, and would be an amazing thing, experiment. No, not experiment, more like a, a form of entertainment, seeing how the young child would grow. She even began thinking of maybe and this person even began thinking of maybe taking on Tanjiro, or his mother, as their body. But immediately put down that thought, realizing that Tanjiro and his mother were far stronger. <clears throat> as we go to, well, the person way up higher, as she thinks, Strange, what a strange and yet powerful child. Hmm. Zetsu, there is a change in plans. I want you, you to over, in the next few years, I want, after I'm done, done with something, I want you to try and recruit a woman and boy to our cause, not to the cause of the Akatsuki, but our own. If I'm correct, and I think I am, they will join us, but only after I am done, ob but you will only ask them after I am done observing. Got it? And Zetsu would then say, yes, mother. <coughs> <coughs> and that's where I'm making this part off. I hope you all have enjoyed part one of what if Tanjiro was Kokushibo's son and was sent to Naruto. Part one. Please like, share, subscribe, and comment if you feel like it. And yeah. I hope you all have enjoyed the video. And, um, you know, goodbye. And, uh, you know, scud.